I'm doing okay. I'm at home. It's just been a very tiring few weeks. Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today and for this video I really wanted to do just a lighter video, just talk about fun things. Um, I know that I've been posting some heavier stuff online the last week or so and I've had a rough couple of days the last few days which I will give you an update on, nothing to worry about, but I will give you an update um, just quickly in a little bit, but I just... We need some lighter content on this channel because it's it's just been very emotionally draining lately. Um, so I thought I could show you my plants, my seedlings that I started a few weeks ago. Um, I wanted to show you what I got my niece and nephew for Easter because I will be seeing them this weekend. Uh, it is Easter weekend, so I'm excited because I need a little bit of normalcy. I need a little bit of just regular activities because my focus has been, you know, obviously everything that's been going on inside of me um, for a few weeks now. So let's, uh, let's go check out my plants. I've had to rearrange them a few times, but I think you'll be shocked with the growth. Um, look at this. We have had a lot of success this year in all of the seeds that I planted so let me start at the top. All right I feel a little short so I'm gonna do my best to reach up here and show you what's growing. Um, this first tray here is my honey nut squash. I think all six of them actually germinated. I'm a little worried I did this too soon but we'll see. And then behind here I have only two butternut squash which is fine because I feel like I only need two plants. Um, and then over here are my tomatoes. Let me get around this light. Look at these babies. They are growing fantastic. I hope that they can wait another like month and a half. Um, down here is a little interesting. I've got my sweet potatoes. So these I actually um, grew from a slip last year. So I took one of the little slips, these guys, planted it in a planter outside and only made these tiny baby little sweet potatoes. <laughs> so I figured I would stick them in some soil, water them, and now they are growing more slips. So I think I'll take a whole tuber out or a whole potato and plant it again in a planter. And then down here you can actually see I have two sweet potatoes that I am growing slips on and each time a slip gets big enough, like this is probably nearing so, I put them in here, which you can see some tiny little roots starting to grow. And I'll show you what I do with these once I do get a good amount of roots. But um, first, we have my peppers also doing very well. Back there is some coleus that I saved over the summer. Um, and then right here, oh, he's not looking too happy. I just transplanted him this morning, so I gotta water him again. These are the sweet potato slips, so I might just throw some water in there real quick. One moment. Steady, steady. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, hopefully that helps. All right, so moving down here, these are some of the zinnias. I know it's hard to tell, let me actually turn off my lights so you can see it better. Okay, here we go. So these are some of the zinnias I'm growing. These are calendula, and then back here are cosmos. And then these are the coleus that I'm growing from seed. Ooh, they're so pretty. I can't wait till they get bigger because what I do is once they've got a few sets of leaves, I'll actually cut the top off so they get a little bit bushier and then I just take the top and root that and I get lots of plants. And then down here, I've got my basil and then I have, actually I just discovered this today, my very first parsley seedling, hopefully that's what that is, coming out of the ground or you know, the soil. I don't know if you can see it. See that tiny little thing? Hopefully that'll work out. These are my snapdragons and over here, celosia. And finally, in the back on the floor so they get enough sunlight are my dahlias, which they look a little weird, but hopefully they'll be okay. I am thrilled with the progress that my plants are making. 
and I want to get my little garden area started and clear it out and stuff but I can't I don't think I should be like exerting myself too much now I, I don't honestly know they they didn't give me any restrictions but I'm so nervous with my body that I don't want to screw anything up <laughs> so we may have to get uh, we may have to get Zach to do that I don't know anyways um let me go back to the dining room and I'll show you what I got the kids for Easter. All right, so you'll see that I have three gift bags here. So I only have a niece and nephew, but they have a cousin that we always see. Um, and this little girl absolutely adores Zach. I think she likes me okay, but she loves Zach because Zach loves to play with her. <laughs> so I have three gift bags for three kids. Uh, this one is for my nephew and they all are pretty closed in what they contain. Um, so I got, I got some Squishmallows. They are the hot thing, I believe. Uh, that's what I hear. <laughs> so I got two for each kid. I actually did get more, but the gift bags are a little too small to hold all of them. So I got these guys for him, and this is hard to find. This is, this is a hard find. A good slinky. I had a slinky like this growing up and it was great because it was thick plastic so it wouldn't bend and it's large enough that it will actually go down the stairs. Um, so as soon as I saw this I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so I got that for each kid and I got this little, let's see, this little glider. I don't know, that was cute. Um, I got them each a thing of peeps. That was something about growing up getting an easter basket i really didn't like the candy my dad ate most of my candy just because it never made me feel good and i wasn't a big sweet tooth so i didn't get a ton of candy i just got one pack of peeps and called it a day i liked the toys so i'm, I'm sure they're gonna get plenty of candy i'll get them some little toys uh the last thing i have in here is a paintable stepping stone I don't know. I thought it was a cool craft that could occupy some time. My nephew is, um, I think he'll be three in the summer, so, you know, wanted to get age appropriate stuff as close as possible. Then for his little sister, who is uh, one and a half ish, got her the same squishmallows, um, slinky, same thing got her her own little paintable garden stone she's got pink peeps i just got a four pack and they had all different colors so um and the only thing different i figured the little glider would not be good for her uh so i got her this little magnetic fishing pole uh so that's what she's getting and then their cousin who is i think she's five she's getting very similar stuff um, you know, squishmallows of her own, the garden stone. She's got the purple peeps. And then her glider is red and yellow. Um, so I figured her and my nephew would probably be smacking them at each other. I don't know. Sounds like a good time. So that's, <laughs> that's what I got the kids. I'm excited to give it to them. They'll probably be hopped up on sugar on Easter and uh, I'm sure they'll love this. I do want to show you one thing that, um, <laughs> with everything going on, it is a gamble as to whether I'm going to cry that day or not. And I really seriously need to invest in some waterproof mascara. Um, but yesterday I was really excited checking the mail all day because I ordered myself a really pretty ring to kind of commemorate what's going on right now. So I will show it to you. Um, it is, let me get my hand in focus here. There we go. So this is a rose gold ring, which matches my wedding bands when I hopefully will get them back and they're fixed. Um, so rose gold ring matches my wedding bands and the stone is citrine which is the november birth stone which uh november 14th would have been my due date so anyway i'm checking the mail for this ring so excited because i want to wear it and <laughs> 
finally gets delivered from UPS. Zach saw the truck outside. He's like, hey, you're, I think your ring's here. So I go out the front door to get it, and there's two boxes. There's my ring, and then there is a box of flowers. And I just wanted to show you. This is from Stoma Cloak. They sent me roses, and... <laughs> They're beautiful, and I didn't expect it, and I burst into tears when I saw the box. And now I'm getting teary-eyed again. I just, I didn't expect it, and it was so sweet. They just, you know, they sent me a nice little card just basically saying we're sorry what you're going through. Um, <laughs> it was so nice. So I was like sobbing, opening the box. <laughs> uh, it was really nice. So, yeah, it has... It's been a whirlwind of the last like few weeks, but also the last couple days. And um, I did update on Instagram because it was just the fastest place to easily share what was going on. But I, I did wind up in the ER this week. Um, not because I was feeling sick or something was, you know, going on that I felt like I needed to go to the ER. But um, obviously I'm being monitored very closely for this ectopic pregnancy. And unfortunately, it seemed like the methotrexate was not working. I had had two doses, and on Wednesday, we saw a heartbeat, which was devastating. <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, it's hard to see it, but I'm so glad that I, I am seeing it. Um, I want that memory. And so I asked the MP doing the ultrasound, like, is this usually the point at which you would recommend surgery? And they're like, Usually, usually this is how it winds up. So, had to wait for my HCG levels, of course, but she wound up communicating with an OBGYN. I don't actually have one at the moment. I only have a gynecologist. And they do this surgery. They do. But they were, they were away this weekend. <laughs> so, they're like, we don't think you can wait till next week to get this surgery. Um, we need you to go somewhere else. So, Fertility Clinic got me in touch with an OBGYN, and they actually... That day I thought I was gonna get a call saying, hey, we made an appointment for you to get a surgery consult and then you'll probably get the surgery over the weekend. That is not what happened. They said, we want you to go to the ER as soon as you can because we don't, we think you're gonna rupture. So that was just, <laughs> Wednesday was awful. Wednesday was awful. Zach and I went to the ER as soon as he got home from work um, and it was just a long, long night in the ER and then I got, admitted, transferred upstairs, and basically what it seemed to have happened is that that was the day that my levels plateaued and then finally started to drop. So by morning, um, I had started to drop my HCG significantly, uh, and yesterday it had dropped again, so I'm, I'm going to be monitored for a long time, and I have to watch myself closely for um, you know, excessive bleeding and stuff. I am actually bleeding a little bit, but, you know, heavy bleeding and pain. I'm not having any pain. I truly would not know that this is happening, um, if they hadn't told me. So, uh, I don't, I had felt some, like, uncomfortableness, but I wouldn't call it pain. Like, it just, it didn't feel like pain. It didn't feel like it was one-sided. Um, and the weird thing about all of this is, because I was monitored so closely, because this all happened through an IUI, I ovulated from my left side, and on all of the ultrasounds, it is showing it in my right tube. Or at least on the right side. They can't confirm it's actually in a tube, but it's on my right side. So, there you go. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. I am doing okay. I am taking it extremely easy. Um and just waiting, getting monitored very frequently and waiting. This is gonna be a long process and I know many of you had mentioned your own experiences with ectopic pregnancies and it taking a very long time for the HCG to fully come to zero. I, I even looked up some stories online and people said months, like five months. I don't know when I'll get a period back so I don't even know <laughs> I don't know my future right now with all of this. I'm just trying to get through this. It was just so unexpected and rough. But I just, I wanted to um, 
tell you this, I have been vlogging through all of it because honestly it helps me a lot. It helps me process what's happening and also helps me remember what happened. Um, I've been vlogging through all of it, but I didn't want to leave people hanging about what was going on. I want people to know that I am okay in this moment. Um, I didn't want you to have to wait for me to get through that footage and <laughs> edit it together and finally get it up online. So um, I'm doing okay. I'm at home. It's just been a very tiring few weeks and I really thank you for just the amount of support, the kind comments, the kind messages. Oh, I'm reading every single one and I... <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, I want this to be a positive vlog. It's Easter weekend. This is one of my favorite times of the year. Um, you know, the daffodils are blooming outside and that means flowers are coming and that's like one of my favorite things. Um, it's beautiful out today. I have the porch doors open, the dogs are hanging out on the porch and I get to see my niece and nephew tomorrow and I'm so excited for that because I just, I haven't seen them in a while because of honestly not feeling good because I was pregnant. <laughs> um, but Thank you so much for your support and thank you for watching this video. It means the world to me and Zach. Um, Zach has been absolutely fantastic. Just the best. He was playing I Spy with me in the ER room. <laughs> um, just trying to keep me entertained and not thinking about things. So that was, he's just great. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you celebrate Easter, I hope that you have just a fantastic Easter. And I will see you very soon. Bye, guys.